Well, I am in my new revamped potting shed. Do you sometimes wish your shed could be just a gorgeous place to be rather than a grot hole? Anyway, mine was definitely a grot hole. So I decided I wanted a place where I could actually really enjoy being, where I could shoot some of my videos that would be a nice backdrop, where the storage would be organised. And I decided the person to ask was a young artist called William Ford, uh, because he works, a lot of his art is installation, so he uses a lot of recycled things. And of course, he's very, very practical, because uh, art today is really hands-on. And actually, it's a, a great way of getting some imaginative ideas for the shed. So literally a month ago, th this shed looked like this. And now it looks like this. William's recently graduated from Bath Art College and I'd been impressed by an exhibition he put on here in Faversham with some fellow artists and he works a lot in installations. So he's good at making and restyling as well as having a creative eye. And I also very much wanted him to use and reuse and upcycle some of the stuff we have lying around. I really didn't want both for financial reasons and for environmental reasons to buy anything new if we could possibly help it. So first I gave him the brief. I explained that I wanted to be able to keep seeds and fertilisers in the shed. At the moment it gets so hot or so cold and extremes of temperature really aren't good for seeds or for chemicals. And although I don't use many chemicals, obviously I need to look after the ones I do use. And it was also important to improve the general storage. I had a few shelves and some hooks, but it was all pretty chaotic and the hooks were quite high. I wasn't really able to sort of hang things on them. And anyway, it just didn't work for me. And finally, I also wanted somewhere to shoot garden videos for the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel when I'm not actually in a garden myself. The big window in the potting shed gives a very good light, so if we could organise the shed properly it would be much easier than chasing around the house and having to move the furniture all the time and then discovering something peculiar in the background. And to be absolutely honest, I'm also rather envious of some of the allotmenteer YouTubers who broadcast their videos from absolutely charming sheds and they're painted in soft colours like duck egg blue and they're hung with bunting and they have vintage wallpapers inside and they brew up tea on camping staves with old-fashioned kettles that whistle and it's just all wonderfully atmospheric but an allotment is quite a long way away from your house and in a middle-sized garden shed a very nicely equipped kitchen with a, an electric kettle is probably just a few steps away so I really didn't think I could go that route. William says that at first he wanted to sort of think up lots of clever ideas and be very clever clever and then he realised when you organise a shed simplicity has to be the key principle, the shed has to work. So he went with one big decorative idea which was to use artificial turf on the walls. Well obviously we're sort of going to clear all this out, um, insulate it, then yeah we're going to sort of go for a covering of astroturf to yeah, kind of sort of how get away from that sort of traditional garden shed, but then sort of the storage and stuff inside will still be sort of quite wooden stuff, so it kind of have a uh, nod in that direction of a traditional potting shed. The rest of the shed was about creating simple, effective storage for big and small items. So firstly, I wanted to make sure that the artificial turf would be a good background for filming. The colour behind you makes a big difference to skin tone in video. It can be the difference between you're looking like a healthy, normal human being or a grim and terrifying ghost. And of course, if you're going to be doing photography or Instagram in your shed, and lots of us are, then the background and the light are important. By coincidence, I was going to a WordPress workshop at Dragon Coworking in Chatham and they have artificial turf on their floor. So when no one was looking, I lay down on the floor and snuck a selfie just to check that the background would be all right. And I think on the whole, I think it's, it's good. So I also asked William to paint the ceiling of the shed white in order to reflect the light better. Insulating the standard potting shed was really quite easy. William bought sheets of foil bubble wrap insulation from a DIY store and fixed them with a staple gun to the shed frame. And he also insulated a little extra drawer for me to give the seeds a little extra insulation. Because of the size of the potting shed window, because there is a slight gap between the roof and the walls, it will never be fully insulated, but it's just less extreme now. 
However, the artificial turf was a bit more difficult. It's quite heavy. William used three methods to fix it to the walls. He firstly used double-sided carpet tape all around the edges of each panel of insulating foil. Then he used a glue gun going from left to right and back again all over the insulation material. And once the artificial turf was fixed with the glue and the carpet tape, he then nailed it to the shed walls to make sure it stays in place. So when it came to the storage, we wanted to reuse and adapt as much as we could. In the end, the only new materials William bought were the insulation, the artificial turf, some very short lengths of pop copper piping and some new S-hooks. He found some concrete breeze blocks in our basement and acquired some old scaffolding boards. As my main expense was William's time, I didn't want him to actually build shelves. So this was a really quick and easy way of making shelves, just simply putting boards on top of breeze blocks. It's also very flexible. If we want to change the storage, we can. I can do it. He also found a couple of chests of old wire basket drawers we bought years ago, probably from Ikea. I haven't actually been able to find anything similar online now, so perhaps they're not made anymore, but any chests or drawers that you don't use would work as well. Just move furniture that you don't use any longer out from the house into the potting shed. Hanging tools on hooks makes them easy to get at and also easy to put away. William found an iron grid that had been part of a safety cover for a pond. You need to hang a grid slightly away from the wall so that you can get the hooks on. So William had very short lengths of copper pipe cut and covered them with a little stub. These old terracotta pots are used for labels, ties, pencils and a couple of rulers. And I bought this shabby chic plant pot holder several years ago on a whim, but I'd never found a place for it before. At the very end, there was a little bit of wood left over, so William put it up on the side of the door and hung three hooks for it. And I just love this one and I think it's awfully useful. Overall, we're really thrilled. It's a pleasure to be in the shed. It's easy to find anything. It's easy to put it away. And um, I just love looking at the garden through my windows, which I'm afraid I do need to clean. If you've enjoyed this video, do hit like because it lets me know that you'd like to see more videos about sheds and transformation and upcycling. And if you haven't subscribed to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel, we come out on Saturdays and we upload tips, ideas and inspiration from real gardens for your garden and garden visits. So do join us. See you again, I hope. Thank you.